Oh, hello. You know, to be perfectly honest, when I was a kid, I didn't like people telling me what to do. Don't go in the attic. Don't drink that. Don't play in the street. I mean, don't adults have something better to do than just bark orders at little kids? Sure, you might get bit by a bat or two in the attic or drink something that might make you explode out of both ends or, or get run over occasionally by an ice cream truck that really should have had its music playing if it was going to be going that fast, but that's how kids learn, right? Well, here's a story about a, a little rabbit that didn't like to be told what to do either and the strange consequences that happened in his life because of it. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. And they lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. And then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around the end of a cucumber frame, who should he meet? Mr. McGregor. (gasps) Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out some young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! (gasps) Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he'd not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with large brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost, and he shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. (gasps) Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put a foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. So... He went back to his work. (sighs) Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out under the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that that she couldn't answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. And presently, he, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. 
Scritch. Scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. Oh, he was so tired he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking, and she wondered what he'd done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end.